Hackers looking to attack a website or a web application like a router's login page need to identify if there's any defenses in place. Today, we'll take a look at a tool called Wafwoof that's able to detect web application firewalls on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Most websites and services online use a firewall in order to prevent hackers from arbitrarily connecting. And the first step for a hacker attacking one of those targets is to figure out what they're up against. Now today, we're going to look at a couple of different ways that we can determine what type of web application firewall a service is running. And this will involve both Nmap and a Python script I really like called Wafwoof. Now in order to install this, since it's a Python script, it is cross-platform. So you will just need to have Python installed and the general workflow we'll be doing is to first detect which type of web application firewall we're dealing with, and then look for specific vulnerabilities or exceptions in the rules that might allow us to slip inside. Now, in order to do this, we'll have to have Python fully installed and updated. And if you have any problems setting this up, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. Once you have Python set up and ready to go, then we can begin. To get started with Wafwoof, the first thing we'll need to do is navigate to the GitHub page. We can do that by going to github.com slash enable security slash Wafwoof. Once you're here, you can see that the list of different web application firewalls it can attack just keeps on going. So you can count on this to be a pretty reliable tool when it comes to identifying the correct firewall that someone's using. Now, at the bottom, you can see that the uh, installation instructions are very simple. So to get started, we'll first need to get, uh, clone the GitHub repository by copying the link here, going to a fresh terminal window, and then doing a git clone, which I've already done here. But as soon as you run this, you should have a Wafu folder to change directories into. And you can do that by typing cd wafu. Once you're inside, you should see, if you type ls, the same files that I have, which include a setup.py file. Now, what you'll need to do is type, well, basically the instructions here. So if you really want to be lazy, you can just uh, copy this and it will require you to sudo. So sudo python setup install, and then there you go. All the necessary libraries for running Wafwoof are installed and it should also run when I just type wow, woof. There we go. So it says I need a target web, uh, website to go after, but we've now installed it so we can just uh, run it with a single command. Awesome. So let's start out by first going through uh, the help file. And we can see there are a couple different things we can adjust, but in general, we're gonna run kind of a straight search and see what we can get going after, let's say, my favorite website, the crappy website that um, Equifax put up as soon as they lost everyone's data. So that's gonna be, mm, let's see, Equifax Security 2017.com, everyone's favorite website. Uh, and if I did it correctly, well, it didn't work. So why didn't it work? Well, okay, this is the HTTP request and EquifaxSecurity.com, I'm willing to bet, is actually running on HTTPS. Now, typically what happens is the website will redirect you automatically, but since Wafwoof isn't using a browser, if we go here, you can see that we're quickly redirected to this other website. So is this tool broken? No, we just need to point it to the actual correct target. So to do so, we'll type in the HTTPS version. And just like that, we can see it is behind a big IP application security firewall. Awesome, we've been able to accurately identify the firewall that is running on this service. Now, let's say that we want to use Nmap instead. Well, there is a convenient script we can use, just Nmap uh, tag P for port, 80 and then 443, which is for HTTP and HTTPS. And then we're going to be running the script HTTP WAF detect. Now, if I run this on just an example, let's just say uh, noodle.com, 
then you can see that uh, we actually get a successful detection. We've found that there is a, a firewall, although it's really not giving us much information about what that is. If we copy this exact same script over here, uh, only instead we use the example we were using before. So we're going to use the Equifax website. We'll see that first it doesn't parse quite the same way. So if I run this nmap script, it's going to say no targets were specified. So we're going to have to strip away all the nice stuff we've done here. And if we run it again, it might not even like the slash at the end. You can see it's kind of fussy. So the nmap version is fussier. It doesn't like, uh, it really doesn't like it when we have any formatting at all, because it's just going to convert it to an IP address and go after it. So here you can see it got no result. It scanned it, it didn't find anything. And that's because Nmap just wasn't set up to be able to, to successfully detect the web application firewall on this IP address. So again, Wafwoof is a great tool because it means you can find stuff that maybe various other tools will not. In this case, like Nmap. So if we want to use another one uh, of these scripts that is really useful, we can go ahead and use the same, basically the same scan, Nmap, TACP, uh, 8443, but this time instead of just detecting it, we're going to attempt to fingerprint it with the HTTP WAF fingerprint uh, command. So let me enlarge this a little bit so you guys on mobile devices can see. Okay, so even bigger, bigger. There we go. Okay, so maybe not that big. So our command is nmap tech p 480443 script HTTP WAF fingerprint and then we're going to do noodle.com. So we already found that we could detect a firewall on noodle.com even if we couldn't exactly figure out what it was. But when we run this, we can actually see it is a Cloudflare service. So that gives us what we need to start figuring out, hmm, how could we get around this? Uh, maybe what are the known rules for this firewall? Are there any known workarounds? And it really narrows our search in terms of figuring out how to get at this target because we now know what is protecting it. Now, trust me when I say that knowing what kind of web application firewall is really, really helpful to a hacker in determining whether or not a, a target is worth it to go after. Because if it has a super strong defense that is easily updated, that's probably a worse target to go after than something that is weakly defended by a application firewall that hasn't been updated in quite some time. Wafwoof is an extremely effective tool for determining what type of firewall someone's using. However, you should be aware that using it can be interpreted as extremely suspicious behavior. So you might not want to go ahead and do this on your corporate network unless that's specifically your job or you want to get some attention. Now, going after websites on the internet should be fine in general because it's just making a series of web requests. But if you're going after specific websites, like, I don't know, maybe the website, or the White House or something, uh, that might not be a good idea unless you're using a VPN or you are looking for that sort of attention. That being said, this is generally just a scanning tool, so it's not that uh, much of a big deal to go ahead and use this. Just be aware that it is interactive, so it's not entirely passive, and that means you are leaving a fingerprint on the target. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you have any problems setting this up, you can always check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, you can send me a message on Twitter, because I'd love to hear from you. And we'll see you next time.